All right, I'm making this video on the screen repair for a Galaxy S7. It's a brand new phone. I don't know if you can tell. Got blow, took a blow in this corner and has a crack going through the middle of it there. Still works as you can see, but that crack bothers them enough that we're gonna replace it. For the Samsung S7, it's got a glass back, so we have to start by heating and removing this glass back to be able to get the front screen off. Um, it's very delicate glass, it's very thin, you can't bend it in any way. You have to heat it, get it really warm, and, and then saw it with playing cards. You have to cut through the glue without bending the glass for it to come off successfully and not breaking it. Um, so, let's shut it down and begin. Now I like to uh, start at the very bottom, it may not be hot enough, but it might, um, using a suction cup and pulling up to get it started, looks like it's going to need more heat, yeah this, it's got a lot of adhesive on it, so it's going to have to get pretty hot to get that first card started, and then it goes a lot easier after that. So really I should focus all my heat for a minute at this end, where I'm going to start and then start heating up around the top after I get my cards in there. There we go. And you'll tell when it needs more heat. It just gets too hard to keep sawing. The playing cards don't always survive this repair, <laughs> so I buy a few, a few decks. Alright, so that's how you get the back glass off a Galaxy S7 without breaking it. So set it aside somewhere where it's not going to get hurt. <clears throat> and then let's begin cleaning up and getting all these screws out from around the sides. <clears throat> I like to track them with a magnet, this business sized card <clears throat> magnet here. It's a real good uh, idea for iPhones especially, you need to know where every screw goes. It's not so important on a Samsung because they're all the same size, or all these are. So you can put them in a pile if you want, but I like to 
have a habit of just putting them where they go on this as relation to the phone since it's about the same shape you can uh, figure out where you got that screw from and put it back in its correct spot they don't always want to come out real easy All right, that looks like all of them. Okay, once we have all the screws out, we can remove the back uh, panels. There's three of them, a top panel, a bottom panel, and a middle panel. They just kind of snap out. These are taped together right there, so top and bottom are middle together. Okay, and right now, before you do anything, you always want to disconnect the battery first. That should be the very first thing to be disconnected on any electronic device before you disconnect anything else. Oftentimes, there's many videos on the internet where they do not do that, and they go straight for the LCD connector and disconnect it while the battery is still connected, and that's a bad idea. It's uh, it's not going to happen every time, but every now and then when you do that, a voltage spike will happen and you'll fry a backlight filter and then the LCD won't be visible because there will be no light behind it. And then that's a much more expensive and hard to do repair. Um, also, at this point, it's a good time to try the new screen to make sure that it works before you get too far into tearing the phone down. Um, so while it's disconnected while the battery is disconnected let's uh, connect the new screen and test it there we go Good so far.
looks pretty good I think we're good so uh, let's disconnect the battery and then continue on with the repair notice how I'm using my fingernail to do these disconnects um, it's my opinion that's the best way to do it if you can um, metal tools are a bad idea uh, on on logic board repair working around the logic board it's a good idea to use your fingernail so you can feel the give and you can tell when something's uh, not ready to give and you can stop and you can't feel that with a plastic or a metal tool so now it's time to start disconnecting all the connectors that are on the logic board so that we can remove it so let's move around Connecting them. These coaxial cables need to be disconnected real gently. home button flex needs to be disconnected down here now it should be able to come up still one connector left maybe easier to get the battery out first. Let's see. And it may not be. <laughs> Battery's connected, so a metal tool is not going to be a bad thing here. Unless I pierce the battery, which is a bad thing. You don't want to pierce it. Well, that one flew out. Alright, good shape there. Alright, so now let's try the logic board again. You can go from the back also if you're real careful right here. There's a connector underneath. See how I kind of pierced it and pulled up on it? There's a connector that holds the um, charge port to the logic board there that's under on the underside. And sometimes if you start there, it can be easier to get out. Oh, I see what's going on. I haven't ejected the uh, <laughs> SIM card tray. Yeah, it's a good idea to do that early on. Alright, camera popped out, no big deal. We know where that goes. So now the logic board comes out with ease. Alright, so set that aside somewhere where it's not going to get hurt. Now that we've got all these components that uh, heat can hurt out of the way, it's time to start heating and working on this uh, front screen now. And we do it very similar to the back. We use playing cards to saw at it after some heat. Um, it is nearly impossible to get a good screen and LCD off of this phone without cracking it. So if your LCD is not already broken, you don't want to take this off unless you absolutely have to because it really is nearly impossible to get it off and then put it back and have it work. This one's broken. I've got a new replacement that has the LCD and the digitizer as a unit. We're doing a full front end assembly so it doesn't matter. Um, but it's good experience to try to get it off if you can without cracking it. You never know.
I might just get a purchase point with this metal tool and then try to get my card in there. Not quite hot enough. Yeah, sometimes the card wants to slip between the glass and the LCD like that and really that would be a glass only repair which we're not trying to do that today. Um, so I may go ahead and separate the two just because it seems like that's going to be the easier way with this one. And then just dig the LCD out afterwards which is alright, you can do that if you're not trying to save the LCD like I mentioned earlier. I want to go over that home button though. So I'm going to get behind this LCD now. Okay, you see this little piece here, that little kind of like a speaker grill? You might want to save that to make sure you've got it if your new screen doesn't come with it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, depending on the vendor. So put that aside where you're not going to lose it. And that's trash. So now it's time to clean up the phone and get ready for the new screen. All the old adhesive, you want to get that off. Mm. Buttons a little. All right, be careful. You can see that cable under there. It's not damaged, but it got close. Now I'm going to pull up all this old glue adhesive and get that out of the way. Dad, I'm sweating. 
Be nice if it came up in one piece, huh? Be careful cleaning up the adhesive around these uh, buttons here. Those flex cables wrap up from the underside and come through. You do not want to cut them, obviously. So just be real careful down here at this uh, home button area. hurt this button or flex cable so I'm moving it out of the way some of this adhesive right here I'm thinking I might just leave maybe helpful but this over here I'm gonna get and put my own
All right, so we know the screen works, the new one. Get some of this glass out of the way here. You don't want it to be around when you start pulling out your own adhesive. And I like to use red tape. Um, they have generic red tape at eBay. You can buy all day long for pretty pretty cheap, and it's good stuff. It works just fine. So I recommend it. Now that works good for the main body area of the phone, but then I've got this two millimeter stuff that, that works good for up around the edges and helps keep that uh, edge down and not start coming up after the repair.
All right, I'm gonna inspect real close, make sure none of these flex cables are messed up. These buttons look good. If they were uh, tore at either side here, then you'd have to replace this part here, this charge port part. And they wrap around this mid-frame part here, so that's how that repair would be done. All right, so now, since we know the screen's good, we already tested it, we can get it ready to go on. Gotta remove all the wax paper to get ready for it. Okay, so now it's ready, except for the back of the screen. Let's, uh, let's remove this wax paper. And we want to bend this to go through the slot that it needs to go through. Wait, before I stick that on there, I just noticed it does not have that speaker grill that I set aside earlier. So I do need to put that in here before I get started. Alright, so that looks good. So now that we got the front stuck on, we need to put the logic board back in place. So this underside connector to uh, the charge port needs to be connected first before you put it down in there. connectors out of the way.
So now it's safe to go ahead and start plugging them back in. Go around getting all the ones you disconnected earlier and get them plugged back. Be real careful plugging these in. They work like Legos, but if you don't have it perfectly lined up and you press too hard, the plastic that the uh, connectors are made from is so soft you'll you'll crush it and then you have a major soldering repair to replace that connector so you want to make sure that you're lined up perfectly before you start pressing down and causing connections so we are on top of a wire here All right, that may be a problem. Nope, there we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. For some reason that popped up. Okay, the camera that popped out earlier, I need to be real careful with that little guy. Try not to touch the lens. Actually, it's probably a good idea at this point to clean the lens in here, just in case your fingers touched it. You don't want to leave a fingerprint in front of the camera. Won't hurt to clean this tip either. Okay, now it's time to put on the back panels. So the top part kind of sticks in like that, snaps into place. Put the bottom one in, kind of sticks under the edge there. Now, we got a lot of screws that we're getting ready to put back in, but it's a good idea to check and make sure, do a test, make sure everything's good before you put those screws in. So let's start it back up and do one more last test and then we'll, if everything's okay, then we'll close it up. Okay, it looks good. So, let's go ahead and put these screws in. That's got a little lip that has to be tucked in. It wasn't tucked in a minute ago, so make sure all these little lips that need to be tucked in get in there. And once they are, you can start putting all the final screws back in.
Okay, now start. it's time to start getting the back panel, the back glass ready to go back on. Um, to do so, we need to remove the old adhesive and kind of kind of see where it is. They've got a lot down here. They've got it all around the rims, but they don't have it in the middle. A little bit over in this area here, um, because in this middle here, you've got this rubber flap, and you don't want to tape to that. That's not real secure. Alright, now back to the red tape. Let's start by going all around the sides. Scissors aren't real sharp, and that can be a real, real drag. You know, I don't think it's going to hurt. Put one little one there in the middle just for a little tiny bit of extra support. All right. 
right, so now let's peel all the wax paper. Time to stick it down. Make sure you press it in all the way around. Make sure it gets a good connection. And there you have it. That's how you repair the screen on a Samsung Galaxy S7. Thanks for watching.